Welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, this topic is going to be great. I was on your website right before we started and I saw stop hustling, start flowing, a better way to get things done. So I have to know like the backstory, like how did, what is your background and how, how did that become like your, your message? Yeah. So my background is I actually was working in corporate initially. I was a consultant in financial services. So my clients were like wall street banks. And I was kind of living like the typical New York lifestyle. I'd wake up super early and like go to the gym, be in the office for 10, 12, sometimes 14 hours. And then usually go out after work to a networking event or something with friends or a date and get four or five hours of sleep and wake up and do it all over again. And just, I was in a constant state of stress and anxiety. I was just pushing myself way too much in all areas of my life. And most of the time I didn't even notice because not only was it my norm, it was the norm of everyone around me just to push really hard. And I had this belief that that's what you have to do to be successful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, eventually my body crashed and had too much of it. And I ended up getting really sick. I had some sort of chronic illness for almost three years. And it was just a huge wake up call to me that the way that I was working and living and operating wasn't working. And that this hustle mentality, this hustle mindset doesn't really work, at least for me. And I went through this big healing journey and I was pretty open with the people in my life, like my friends and my coworkers about what was going on with me and specifically my health issues. And I think because I was so vulnerable and like willing to share, other people also opened up to me about what was going on with them. And so many people told me, they're like, you know, I get panic attacks on the regular. I have stress rashes or thyroid or fertility or like all these different issues from stress, from overworking and from all the pressure and demands from life. And it was just this big revelation for me that this is a really big issue. And in my world, no one was talking about it. Everyone was acting like everything was great and they were handling everything. And it turns out people weren't. They just were too afraid to say it because of all the stigmas that we have. And so it really inspired me to want to share my story and to let people know that they're not the only ones struggling with this. And that also there's just a better way to work and just a better way to get things done. And we don't have to push ourselves so hard. And I found a balance. I like found all these different tools and techniques to allow me to still achieve my goals and be quote unquote successful, whatever that means mm -hmm. to you, and still be happy and healthy and have a balance in all the other areas of my life. So that's what inspired me to create return to flow and to become a mindset coach. I think everyone's probably like, what is the better way? Like, tell me the better way. <laughs> so what, what, what is, what is the better way? What, what did you learn? And like, and what, what, how do you handle that now? Yeah. So I think a really huge lesson that I learned is our bodies have so much wisdom and just following the natural rhythm of your body. And it's really interesting. Your body knows like exactly how much sleep you need, exactly when you need to take a break, when you should be exercising, when you need to connect with people. And it's always giving you these cues. And I think we're just trained to not listen to it, or we're just so caught up with everything going on that we don't honor it. But when you work with your body, you work more effectively and productively because you're taking breaks when you need to, you're giving your body what it needs. So that was a really huge revelation for me. But also I think understanding like what the underlying mindsets are that cause you to overwork. And that's really what I focus on with my clients. So I think a lot of people, they tend to turn to certain stress management techniques or productivity hacks. And those are great. I still use a lot of them, but I think they tend to be a band-aid solution if you don't get to the underlying cause. So a really common example I use is like, say someone had a lot of shoulder pain and they were really tense. And if they stopped their analysis there, the next logical step would be to like do some stretches or get a massage or foam rolling or something like that. But you probably would have to do it every day or most days because the pain's always going to be there. And if you took the analysis a step further and realized it's actually the way that I'm sitting that's causing this pain. And so if I adjust the way that I'm sitting, I don't really have to do these stretches every day, maybe not at all. And so that's what I do with my coaching is I help people understand like, what's the underlying reason that you're pushing yourself so hard and there's so much stress in your life. And for a lot of people, it's things like they're perfectionist and they have these like impossibly high standards and they stress themselves out so much trying to reach these standards that they're never going to, to reach. Or they have a really hard time saying no and they have way too much on their plate and they can't manage it all. 
or for some people, a lot of people, this was a big one for me, like their self-worth is tied to their job and how well they do. And if they're not doing well, they push themselves way too hard to kind of chase praise and recognition. And so all these different things are causing us stress. And so actually understanding that and healing that causes like a more transformational shift and you eliminate all these unnecessary sources of stress in your life and things that typically cause burnout and what caused burnout for me. Yeah, no, I def, I definitely had my share of burnout too. And I worked in corporate for eight years and mm-hmm. was very stressed and the workaholic, um, and realized what exactly what you said, like starting with the health and starting with mindset are like the two, two big things, um, that helped me then change my career came next, right. After I figured out my health and the mindset, then I figured out the career I love too. So I would imagine once people figure out the health and the mindset, do they make a career transition? <laughs> do they do something different? Yeah, I think that is actually really common. And um, I think when you start to realize, like, why am I actually doing this job? Um, and I yeah. think for a lot of people, it's just understanding your underlying motivation. Like, are you doing this because you love it? Or are you doing this because you're afraid something's going to happen if you, if you don't? Are you from like this abundance mindset or the scarcity mindset? And yeah, I think when you start working more aligned with your body and following your natural rhythm and you start realizing like, these are the things that give me energy and that give me joy. I think it's kind of a logical next step for a lot of people to make a career change because they realize they weren't in the first, they weren't in the right career in the, in the first place. Yeah. So how do you uncover your own definition of what success is then? Yeah, I think the first step is realizing that there's not one set definition and that it's going to look different for everyone. We all have different goals and, and purposes and strengths and ways of working. Everyone's body's different. Um, so the way that you work is going to be different. So I think knowing that it's going to be unique to you. And I think also just understanding what your underlying motivation is for wanting to be successful. So I kind of said before, some people do things because they love it. Some people do things because they're they're afraid something's not going, they're afraid something's gonna happen if they don't. So a common way I look at this is knowing your underlying motivation. Like, are you motivated by love or are you motivated by fear? Um, And I think that's a really good way to understand what your definition of success is. So someone that's motivated by love say they were waking up every morning to work out. They do it because it's something they really enjoy doing. And it's like their Zen time, it helps them clear their mind and get centered and they feel really healthy and strong. And it's great that they fit into whatever size jeans or whatever other factors are involved, benefits are involved, but they would do it regardless because they love it so much. Whereas someone who's motivated by fear, maybe they wake up to work out every morning because they're afraid they're gonna gain weight and that people aren't going to find them attractive and that they won't have any love interests. And like, they really beat themselves up and push themselves way too hard to kind of reach this goal. And they don't really enjoy what they're doing, but they're doing it because they're afraid something bad is going to happen to them if they don't. So they kind of get caught in this all or nothing mindset. And yeah, I think that's a definition of success that could be potentially toxic for you and lead you down a path of stress and burnout versus where you're listening to your body and doing what you love. Um, I think it tends to be a better way of approaching success. And it's really ironic. I feel like when we're operating from a place of love versus fear, we're just as good, oftentimes even better at the work that we're doing and we're way less stressed out about it. I feel like every day can be a fresh start too when you operate with love, right? Like it's Mm -hmm. like, if you have a bad day and it didn't quite go as well, like I feel like you can wake up the next day. It's not success in 10 years from now, you know, I'll be successful later. You can do it. You can be successful on a daily basis with what you said. I love that. So how, how do you then discover what, what your true desires are then? You know, if you're, I remember those days I was so busy and have like a spare moment, right? Like you're go, 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 your boss is telling you you need to do this. And then you're, you're just like, a million miles an hour, like go, go, go. So how, if you're in that spot right now, which a lot of our listeners are right. maybe they're driving home from work. They just had a terrible day. Um, they're overwhelmed. They're stressed out. Like what, what should they do? How do they figure out what they should do next? Yeah. So I actually have an exercise that I go through with my clients and I created a free guide on it. That's actually called stop, Hustle, stop hustling, start flowing. Um, it teaches you a better way to get things done, but I think it also teaches you to understand what your true desires are. 
And so it's really just focusing on what lights you up and what gives you joy and what's energizing you. So the exercise involves like just creating a list of all the different things that you do throughout the day, all your work tasks, extracurricular things, hobbies, the people that you're interacting with and putting it into one of three categories. So the first is high energy activities. So these are things that give you energy, that fuel you. Like when you're doing them, like time just flies by and you don't even know where it goes. And then medium energy activities, you don't love them, but you don't hate them. They're just kind of okay for you and they don't really give you energy, but they don't take it away. And then low energy activities are really draining and exhausting and you hate doing them and they're super depleting. And so I think it, it teaches you two things. It helps you to understand how you're using your energy. And I think that's a really important tool that we like don't notice or don't think about. We tend to manage our time, but we don't think as much about our energy. And when you're doing something you love, it takes way less energy than doing something that you really dread and hate. And so you get more done because you really enjoy doing it. And it, and it helps you figure out what your purpose is and what your desires are. I think our bodies kind of know, like I said, our bodies are really wise. And so if you're doing something that you dread doing, maybe it's a sign that it's not the best fit for you. And if you're doing something that really fuels you and lights you up, it's probably a sign that it is a good fit for you and you'll actually work more efficiently and get more done and be less stressed. So it's a win-win. Yeah, this is good too, because when I teach career, finding a different career and career change, I say to look at your day job, like look at your current job and find things in your current job that you do like that give you that energy. Cause like for me, there was a small part of like doing teaching and training in my day job. That was like mm. the part that you're talking about. That was like the energy and then everything else I hated. Mm -hmm. But if they do your exercise that you're talking about, then they can pull out if, if there are things in their current job and then transition that into their, their next career too. So I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So what are the causes then of, of burnout? Like the signs, the symptoms, like if you're, if you're feeling a certain way, like what, what are the warnings, the warning signs? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think it shows up differently in different people. So it's really kind of tapping into like your unique body um, and how it shows up for you. But I think you tend to be very depleted in like every area of your life, just like physically exhausted, like emotionally tapped out. For me, when I was really burnt out, I didn't really have the energy to do anything. Like after like a long week, I was like, I just want to sit at home and like watch mind numbing TV shows for like hours on end because I just don't have the capacity to do anything anymore. And so I think you really start to lose like your like luster and like passion for life and all the things that you love to do and don't have the capacity to deal with challenging things anymore. And like I said, for some people, when I talk to them, it started to show up physically and you start to have health issues and I think there's a huge link between stress and health that we we tend to like overlook um, and a lot of a lot of health issues are caused from from stress from overworking and other air things but a lot of overworking definitely yeah those are all warning signs so what about you mentioned saying no was one of the you know reasons for for stress of, of not saying no and finding it hard to say no so what you know, what are those, why is it important to learn your boundaries and why is it so hard? Yeah, that's a really good question. And this is something I've historically really struggled with and I've improved upon, but it's something that's still, it's really hard. Um, yeah, so I think it's important for two, a lot of reasons, but I guess two big ones. One is that just in this day and age, we're just so inundated with information. And like, there's just so many things to do and participate in and so many things to try. And it's literally just not possible to do it all. And so in order to be effective and not spread yourself too thin, you have to prioritize things. And to do that, you have to set boundaries and, and say no to, in order to make sure you're focusing on what you're good at and what you're strength at and what you have time and energy for. And also, I think, like I said before, like, to work most effectively, in my opinion, you really have to follow your natural rhythm and know like, I need to rest now, I need to take a break now, I can only work certain times of the day, that's when I'm the most effective. And in order to do that, you also really have to set boundaries and say no. And I think it's really hard because a lot of us have underlying fears around what's gonna happen to us if we say no. And that's where this deeper mindset work tends to come into play. And I think for some people, they're afraid if I say no, like someone's going to get upset, like they're going to have a negative reaction and be angry or, or sad and they feel responsible for their emotions. And so they don't want to say no. 
Um, or people are afraid that if they say no, it's going to jeopardize something, maybe jeopardize the relationship, maybe jeopardize their work, like they might fall behind, especially if other people are doing all these things and they're choosing not to. Um, or some people, I think a lot of us kind of get taught to like, be like a martyr and to like sacrifice our health and all this stuff yeah. for, for our work and to get ahead. And like, I'm someone who can do it all. And I think we also get caught up in that mentality and that makes it, we're like, I don't even need to say no, but we're doing way too much and it's not manageable. Yeah. So what, and you talk about too, how American culture idolizes workaholics as well. Mm -hmm. And so why, why do you say that women, women are hit the hardest you say? So tell us more about that. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why women are impacted, but I think one of them, and this is kind of something I've discovered from like my health journey is that women's bodies are just different. And I don't think we like honor and respect like women's like unique differences. So I, through my health journey, I learned a lot about um, like my cycle. And I read this book called Women Code by Alyssa Vitti. I believe her last name is. And she talked about how there's actually four phases to your like your menstrual cycle, which I never knew. And in each phase, your energy levels are different. And so like you'll kind of crave different foods or like you'll be primed for different exercises or even your brain's kind of different for different things. And so like we're not wired to like work like consistent nine to fives. Like there's times in the month where like we have tons of energy, we can get a million things done. And there's times the month where we need to like take care of ourselves and go slower. And I think the way that a lot of corporate places tend to be structured, it's more catered towards men because of historical things. And men tend to be very even keel in terms of their energy, at least from like a hormone perspective. And women are not. And I think they're pushing themselves way too hard when they need to be resting and respecting their bodies. And yeah, I think that also plays into like when you have children or you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding, like that's a lot on your body and it's a lot to juggle and manage everything. And I don't think we do enough to support women. And they have such an important role in society with birthing and taking care of children yeah. that I think we need to find a better balance so that they're not so burnt out so that they can manage all these important responsibilities and still advance in their career. Yeah. Everyone listening on the podcast can't see that I'm like nodding <laughs> over and over. Cause I, I quit my job after maternity leave, mm -hmm. um, with my firstborn and I struggled for years with infertility before that too. So, and then now I've had two going through the, you know, breastfeeding and the, the birthing process for two. So I, totally understand like the energy levels and like working when you are feeling the most energized and just transitioning with like the rest there's like certain periods where you're like super energized and certain ones where you're just like okay I'm just gonna step back a little bit <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and that's okay but it's hard when you're in that corporate culture that it would it's it's practically impossible to step back a little bit yeah definitely yeah I don't really know what the solution is but Maybe just being, being aware. Someone, yeah. yeah. Being aware. Like I wish I would have known about, you know, my cycle and like that kind of the energy flow before I was, you know, older, you know, mm -hmm. so just putting it out there, maybe we're helping someone who's younger too, who's going to know this, um, when they, when they're in this time period too. So mm -hmm. awesome. So tell us where everyone can go find out more about you and your stop hustling, start flowing, um, guide. Rachel. Yeah. So I have a website. It's called the return to flow.com. So you can learn more about me and my work and the coaching that I offer. And I have some free resources. So one of them is the stop hustling, start flowing guide. Um, I also love getting personal emails. I love connecting with people one-on-one. -on -one, so you can totally feel free to email me. My email is Rachel, R-A-C-H-A-E-L at the return to flow.com. Awesome. So that's one way you're utilizing what you love <laughs> too, is like the one-on-one, yes. -on -one, the, the emails. I don't think many people have given out their email on the, on the podcast oh, yeah? before. So that's awesome. So what would be your final word of wisdom for someone who is, you know, in that hustle mode and that stress mode, um, and in the burnout right now, like, what would you, what would you tell them given your experience too? Like you, you, you were that woman, what would you tell her? Yeah, I just would say that you're not alone, that it's a very common thing, and that there is another way of working, and that you can still achieve everything you want to achieve and accomplish everything you want to accomplish with having balance and without being so stressed out and take some, some inner work to get there, but it's, it's totally possible. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel, for being here.
Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.